Wounded men have a high priority in war and a vast organization has been set up to offer them complete medical treatment. They receive immediate care in the field and at battalion aid stations. They receive intermediate care at collecting and then clearing stations. Those whose wounds require more detailed care are speeded back to the third echelon, the evacuation hospital. Here is the point in the chain of evacuation where facilities are provided for treatment of all casualties. The evacuation hospital services an entire frontline division and operates as a ground force unit under army headquarters. It is organized as a semi-mobile unit because it must be able to follow the division which it serves. Just a day or so ago, this was a barren, soggy meadow, but not a meadow chosen at random. Many considerations enter into the selection of the site. Usually situated just outside artillery range, the evacuation hospital still must be close to the troops it supports. The site should be level and at a considerable distance from a military objective. Also, it should be located near a road net that will accommodate heavy traffic from the front and to the rear. As the hospital goes up, the scene may look like one of disordered confusion. But behind the scene is a well-ordered plan of construction. This is a workable layout, though it may change with circumstances and vary with terrain. The receiving and sorting tents are the first to go up. After that, in order, come the pre-operative tent, the shock tent, and the operating tents. They are put up in this order so that within an hour or so, the hospital is ready to admit and care for patients. Then the remaining tents of the professional section are put up. These are followed by the construction of headquarters and the administrative departments. While construction is going on, trucks assigned to the unit continue to bring equipment to the site. Two shuttles are required to transport the entire hospital to any selected location. Everybody chips in, nurses, doctors, enlisted men. When the tents have gone up, there may be a breather but not for long, for many things remain to be done. Supplies must be stored where they can be reached quickly when the need arises. Garbage pits must be dug. A communication system installed. Provision must be made to keep the hospital tents warm at all times. And an adequate water supply must be maintained. Lanes are made passable in the continual war against mud. Hay is strewn along them to offer firm footing. Or squares of slate may be laid down to act as pathways. And this is the end result. No impressive concrete structure. No quiet corridors. No tile operating rooms. Still, this mobile hospital, which can be put in operation within four to six hours, will offer the finest of medical attention to the battle wounded. This high degree of efficiency is the result of careful organizational planning. Operating under the control of headquarters are both the administrative and professional sections. The administrative section has charge of the detachment of enlisted men, utilities and supplies, operation of the mess, transportation, the registrar's office, and receiving and evacuation. Under the professional section fall surgery, operation of the wards, the pharmacy and laboratory, and x-ray. The casualties who started to arrive as the first tents went up continue to pour in. The wide turnaround allows ambulances to discharge their loads and move off without creating snarls of traffic and consequent delays. Casualties are admitted at the receiving tent. Here a brief examination is made to determine whether the case is an extreme emergency or perhaps a contagious disease. Following this, the wounded man's field medical record is begun and his equipment and personal belongings registered.
A receipt for the latter is affixed to each medical record and a copy forwarded to the registrar. The registrar keeps complete records of the sick and wounded, prepares a daily casualty report, and is responsible for service records, patients' clothing and valuables. An enlisted man, assigned to the registrar's office, assists in the storage and safekeeping of these personal belongings. Meanwhile, casualties are taken to the sorting tent, where a further examination will be made by an officer, expert in wound diagnosis, to determine the priority of treatment. Here, if a man is found to be in pain from his injuries, morphine may be administered. Casualties are then assigned to a specific section or ward. Those suffering from shock are removed to the shock tent, where, after the usual blood test and preliminaries, infusions of blood or plasma give them the strength necessary for later surgery. Post-operative patients suffering from shock are also treated in this tent, and equipment is available for transfusions. The X-ray tent is normally adjacent to surgery. Enlisted men, usually trained at an enlisted technician's school, perform the vital preoperative function of taking X-ray pictures. And here surgeons interpret X-ray films, do foreign body localization and fluoroscopy. Casualties ready for surgery are taken to the pre-operative tent after a trip to the bath department, where they have been prepped. Pre-operative patients are checked for hemorrhage, shock, presence of tourniquets, and blood vessel or nerve injuries. The wounded man is now ready for surgery. But surgery must be made ready for him. Sterilization is just as complete here as in the finest general hospital at home. Instruments are first washed and cleaned. Rubber gloves are sorted and prepared. Bandages and dressings are sterilized, all to ensure a safe and aseptic operation in a pasture. Close by the operating tent, the equipment for surgery is stored. Ether, Novocaine, Pentothal sodium, syringes. Anesthetists check their instruments carefully before every operation. Ingenuity often takes the place of unavailable equipment. To the operating tables of the evacuation hospital come a stream of war wounded men. Often as many as six operating teams may work at once. Since surgery is the primary function of evacuation hospitals, their staffs are composed of a high proportion of surgeons. These may be augmented by surgical teams, which consist of a surgeon, an assistant, an anesthetist, and three technicians. If casts are necessary following surgery, they are applied in the operating tent. The evacuation hospital frequently has orthopedic teams attached for this purpose. From surgery, the casualty is removed to the post-operative ward, where the slow process of convalescence begins. Here, morale is often as important as medical treatment. This kind of a close shave gives a man a new outlook on life. Perhaps you couldn't find this holder for sale at your local drugstore but it looks pretty good to the man whose hands won't hold a cigarette for some time. A few puffs, a smile, and that contraption was more than worth the trouble it took to rig it up. The medical wards include on their staff officers especially trained in internal medicine and others in neuropsychiatry. Under pressing combat conditions, a section of the wards may be utilized to provide more beds for the operating section. Laundry for the wards and operating tents is always a problem. Sheets, towels, robes, pajamas must all be ready for each incoming patient. Therefore, a mobile quartermaster laundry unit is usually attached to the evacuation hospital. 
Serving the entire professional section are the laboratory and the pharmacy. Refrigerators keep biologicals and blood specimens from deteriorating. The laboratory is equipped to perform urinalyses, blood counts, blood typings, and other testing procedures. In the pharmacy, prescriptions are filled and drugs are stored and issued. Full records must be kept of all narcotic issues. Whole blood is stored here in a refrigerator and is drawn upon whenever needed. The dental section is equipped to handle all dental procedures, including laboratory work. Chow call is just as welcome as it was before hospitalization. Food for the hospital's patients is prepared by a specially trained mess personnel, and the meals are carefully planned by an expert dietitian working with the mess officer and his staff. Portable steam tables are used to bring hot food to bed cases, meals on wheels for those confined to the wards. And here's service with a smile. In the evacuation tent, casualties who are ready to be discharged, either back to their outfits or to general hospitals, are checked out. They take with them copies of their field medical records. Some have progressed sufficiently to be able to walk to waiting ambulances. Others are still litter cases who here begin the first leg of their journey back to general hospitals in England and the United States. Some go by plane. Others are evacuated by hospital train. And still others cross the beaches to waiting LSTs. The evacuation hospital has done its job. <laughs>